together. <coughs> o oh God, God, powerful and compassionate, your shepherd, your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us, heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Are we racing to the podium? Our first reading this morning is from Jeremiah 23. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doing, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 23 responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd. Our next reading is from Ephesians 2. So then, Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down <coughs> the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace to the Holy Spirit from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You just might recall from a couple of weeks ago that the disciples were sent out two by two on a mission trip where they were told to pack light. So light that they were supposed to have a bag, no bag, no money. No extra clothes, not even food. Just wear sandals and carry a big stick. Kind of sounds like that famous saying of Teddy Roosevelt, you know, walk softly and carry a big stick. <laughs> I think Jesus had it first. <laughs> but now the disciples are back with Jesus and they're excited about all the stuff that they were able to accomplish on this mission trip. But Jesus can tell they're pretty worn out. So he suggests, hey, let's go on vacation. Come away to a deserted place all by yourself and rest a while. Maybe during this mission trip, the disciples have gotten a little bit of taste of what Jesus goes through all the time. The reputation of Jesus as a great prophet and a great healer has obviously gotten around. And everywhere he goes, he's mobbed by people who are in need of healing. And maybe God can handle all of that, but the disciples are not God. They're not as well trained. They haven't had as many thousands of years of practice as God has. They don't have thousands of years of practice handling the Israelites. The disciples are just mortals. They're just people. And they have trouble setting their priorities. So here they are back with Jesus and they can't even find time to grab a snack. They need God's help in the form of Jesus to give them permission to have a quiet getaway. And I think that's what motivated Jesus to suggest, let's go on vacation. Once people knew about the power and the authority of Jesus and that it rests on other people, they swarm all these disciples with all of their desperate problems. However, it soon, soon becomes quite clear that not everyone will be able to take a vacation. Nope. As the disciples and Jesus come ashore, suddenly they are surrounded by the same group of needy people who didn't get a chance to get healing on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. So this is when Jesus takes over. Instead of ignoring the hurting people and going on with his vacation, Jesus has compassion for them. Instead of thinking of the people who are gathered on the shoreline as an inconvenience, he says they are sheep without a shepherd. He doesn't show anger toward them because they're chasing after his disciples. He doesn't make excuses as to why today is an inconvenient time for healing because they're going on vacation. No, he doesn't turn anyone away. Instead, he has compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. The systems of their society have broken down for these people. The healthcare system is inadequate. The religious authorities have been 
inadequate to help. They have not taught them well, and it seems that they don't know how else to get healing. So people are hurting, and there's no relief for them, at least until Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up, and the disciples are on vacation, but Jesus steps into his role as the Good Shepherd. He starts with teaching, but he soon moves on to healing. And my guess is that the news about the woman who touched Jesus on the cloak and got healed, that news has gotten around. Because many people are begging, let me just touch the fringe of your cloak. And they were all healed. Pretty soon everyone, his, his disciples and the crowd alike, is experiencing what is written in Psalm 23. With the Lord as our shepherd, we have everything we need. Everything. The disciples are experiencing what it is like to be led to green pastures besides still waters. And the crowd is experiencing healing that comes from being anointed with oil in the name of the Lord. Everyone, everyone can see how the table is set. Everyone can see that Jesus sets the table with his very own self, overflowing with compassion for the needs of others. Nobody gets left out. Everyone is invited to the healing service. There are no dividing walls. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, male or female, Greek or Roman, Hebrew, Samaritan, stubborn old Israelite. It just doesn't matter. If you need healing, you're in the right place. Everyone gets to experience the love of God through Jesus Christ. Everyone is led along the paths of righteousness, and everyone gets a foretaste of what it just might be like to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, where goodness and mercy are plentiful. And disease and disfigurement do not And that's the world where Jesus, as the Good Shepherd, and, and that's the world that Jesus invites us into. Jesus is called to invite others. Jesus invites everyone to experience the world the way Jesus does. His desire is that everyone will begin caring for one another and loving each other the way God loved all people. As Jeremiah found out, humans are incapable of leading the way Jesus does. We cannot shepherd the way Jesus does. We, we may have a good leader now and then. We might have somebody we really like, but more often than not, leaders begin to look out for their own self-interest. And they begin to ignore the interests of other people. And that's when we become like sheep without a shepherd. Human leaders always let us down eventually. Religious leaders have been caught in crimes like embezzlement or abuse. Political leaders have been caught in scandals on a regular basis. Whether they're senators, representatives, judges, or even the President of the United States. They all get caught in something somewhere. Medical leaders, or even the best medical personnel, are limited by their available technology. Not one of our leaders can shepherd us the way Jesus can. So we're better off if we put our trust in Jesus. Follow Jesus. Have faith in Jesus. Jesus is not like any other mortal human. We're like sheep without a shepherd. That is, until we follow Jesus. When we learn to love like Jesus and accept our human companions along the way in this planet, when we are moved to compassion for those who are in need along the way, the way Jesus is, when we are willing to care for others regardless of gender or even gender preference, regardless of age, regardless of economic status, regardless of color, when we are willing to believe that God loves all people, all of us, in equal measure, then we just might be able to build the kind of church that Paul describes to the Ephesians. 
we might just be able to build a church where we are no longer strangers and aliens, but we are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In you, you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. So let us make a place where God is pleased to dwell. Let us open our hearts to Jesus, our shepherd, so that sin and division are washed away with the body and blood of Christ, the body and blood of Christ that we take together every week. Let us build a church on the foundation laid by Christ himself, who gave himself for us to take away our sin, and then gave us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all the truth. Let us live our lives as a living example of Jesus himself, Jesus, the light of the world, who guides others to the Good Shepherd.